Hello, I am Karina. And I'm Maddie. And welcome to Everything But the Fairy Tale Sink. That was kind of a funky hello. <laughs> <All right. laughs> this week's episode is the first of a two-parter that we are going to be doing on vampires. So today we're going to be discussing the more ancient vampires, and then next week we're going to go from like the Renaissance on and focus more on a singular area. These two episodes will be a little bit on the longer side, and I'm going to try my best with pronunciations in this one. I will say <laughs> for this one, this first part I've been told is more informational, and the mm -hmm. second part is where it gets more interesting. So you won't be getting my reaction as much, but I will be asking questions to help me understand things and to help you guys understand things and to make sure that Karina's talking can get broken up a little bit so she can rest her voice sometimes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, this one will be a little less funny than usual, but we hope it'll still be enjoyable, just a little more informative. So before we begin, how are you, Madison? I am good. I'm a little tired. I've had a migraine since, well, mm kind of late last night. Um, mm -hmm. My roommate, who I realized I haven't said his name, his name's Matt. Um, Matt and I finished um, Life is Strange Before the Storm, which is the prequel to Life is Strange. Mm -hmm. He was upset by the ending. I knew what the ending was because <laughs> I've seen playthroughs of the game. Um, and we also watched We Need to Talk About Kevin. And that movie's not for the faint of heart, but as someone who is a psych student, I like picking things apart while watching them. And so, being able to like pick apart Kevin was entertaining for me. So nice. Yep. All right. Yeah. I will also say that we're a little on the tired side. I have been fighting with my internet for a week now. <coughs> we were st supposed to start filming this at one, and it is currently two forty-five. <laughs> yes, indeed. So. <laughs> um, we also did one take before this. Realized it was garbage. I just deleted it forever in the trash. So. Hopefully this one's better. Woo! All right, so before we begin, do you want to give your recommendation of the day? Yes, my recommendation of the day is take a nap. You know, even if it's a short nap, super long nap, just take a nap, you'll feel better. And if you think you don't deserve a nap, I'm going to give you permission. You absolutely deserve that nap you want to take. I'm going to yawn on cue. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely need a nap after this. All right, my recommendation of the day kind of goes with this episode. It is the Book of Vampire Forensics by Mark Collins Jenkins. I will say it'll probably be a 16 plus recommendation because it is a little on the graphic side, but it looks into the nonfiction science. I mean, science is usually nonfiction, but it looks into the science behind a lot of these legends. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, Maddie, what do you think of when you hear the word vampire? So rational part of my brain thinks you know impure creatures can't see themselves in mirrors you know can't go into churches or they'll burn all the whole they're impure church is pure all that fun stuff monkey brain thinks glitter sparkle boys from twilight so oh goodness glitter yep. sparkle boys might be my favorite phrase we've said thus far I don't know, evil Danny DeVito might take the cake. However, that's pretty we're, far from- We're just starting out. We're gonna have a lot of these oh, later yeah. on. Yeah, those are actually pretty far off <laughs> from the vampires we're going to be discussing today. A uh, little disclaimer, you are gonna see the back of my phone a lot today because I have to look at pronunciations. So, cultures around the globe have had malevolent forces that feed off of human existence since the beginning of at least written time. Probably before that as well, but since the beginning of time as we know it. So sometimes those were blood-sucking creatures of the night, and then other times they were witches intended on stealing the life force of innocence. The first recorded menace, or pair of menaces, that we're going to be speaking of was from Sumerian mythology, based in the lands of modern-day Iraq. Archaeologists found records of the Babylonians and their deep-rooted fear of blood-drinking demons. In their demon hierarchy, two took what I put in my script as the death cake. So the first is the Ikamu, which was first written about in 400 BC in Assyria, and they were the spirits of those who died tragically young. And they enjoyed victims of all kinds. I believe they were a life force demon, and they had to be either exercised, like in the way that we see now, but in the ancient religion, or they were destroyed by wooden weapons. And interestingly, we see these methods of dealing with vampiric forces to this day. There was also Lamashtu, 
a demoness who set the precedent for evil demonesses everywhere. She was a winged woman with a hairy body and the head of either a lion or a jackal, depending on the artist's interpretation. And she would seduce men, destroy crops, send plagues, and torment expecting mothers in hopes of stealing their babies. And she was also a big fan of the taste of human blood. I feel like, you know, because you mentioned earlier, vampires are life-sucking creatures or blood-sucking creatures. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm going to cover like a lot of boogie creatures. So like mm -hmm. life, mayor, nightmare things. I wonder like, are they, you know, they have to be connected in some way, right? Oh, I'm sure. You no, know, vampires, nowadays, they're more like blood sucking, weird sex icon things. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they... <laughs> <laughs> but they used to be, you know, life force or blood and a whole bunch of bad things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would guess so, because as we're going to get into a little bit more later, a lot of these ancient legends are very interconnected. I just want to hear about the vampire pumpkins. You promised me Next something episode, and I want I promise. All right. So Lamashtu, we're going to be talking about her quite a bit. She was considered to be the mother of monsters and she very well could have been. So considering there were quite a few legends of other ferocious women, usually deities that sprung up all across the world. So the first one we're gonna look at is Sekhmet of Egypt. She had such flattering nicknames as the Scarlet Lady or the Mistress of Slaughter. She was the creation of the sun god Ra and she was sent down to earth in efforts to punish humanity for the rebellion. So she was basically supposed to eat the humans. However, she became so bloodthirsty that she consumed up to 90% of humanity and Ra ordered her to stop. And she was like, nah, dude, they taste really good. <laughs> okay. So, wow. Sekhmet basically, like I've said earlier, killed up to 90% of the human population. And then finally she was tricked into stopping. However, how that legend plays out, we will cover at a later time because it's honestly really fun and I want to talk about it more. So do you have any kind of thoughts about the Sekhmet legend? Not really, but this goes because you just mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Anytime we talk about something that's not super in-depth and you want an in-depth thing on, yeah. you know, on the thing that we've skimmed over, please let us know because chances are there's so much information about it that we just can't fit it into an episode, mm -hmm. but we will cover it if you want it. Very, very gladly. We would definitely yes. love to hear your ideas. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at another famous ancient civilization, probably the most famous, the Greeks. And they had a lot of examples of vampiric women, specifically women. We see this a lot in ancient folklore. Women had a lot of, like, creepiness about them, apparently. It, yeah, I don't know, but I know in, like, viking culture women were the ones in charge most of the time like mm -hmm. if a husband cheated on his wife she was you know i won't go into detail about it but she was able to take control of the situation and she was often the one in charge of finances mm -hmm. so i just think it's interesting how women are either super powerful or demons or both this is when know? we look into them being both really yay uh, so the first I'm going to go ahead and give the disclaimer. I do not speak Greek. So I do apologize to anybody watching who does speak Greek. I'm trying to learn it, you coward. I'm already learning Russian. <laughs> 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 All right. So the first one we're going to talk about is Apusa, the daughter of the goddess Hecate. And she was a demonic bronze footed monster that could change into a beautiful woman and fed on the blood of young men while they slept. Um, there's a distinction I'm going to make shortly, but I'm remembering that now. There were also the Strigs, which were winged night creatures that fed on the blood and internal organs of sleeping infants and men. The source I was looking at really wanted me to mention the internal organs part. And there are still more examples after this, and I'm sure there are more than I even have written down. The next one we're going to talk about are the Copidas which were female death spirits released by Pandora and who drank the blood of the dying and wounded on battlefields. And the last one we're going to talk about is the Lamnia, which are a f race of female vampires feared as both child killers and for their ability to change into beautiful maidens and seduce men into bedchambers 
where they drank their blood. And I do think this is actually different from Abuza in the beginning, because I think she just went around like creeping, like she'd get pretty so she could sneak into places. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty the, woman <laughs> walking down the street. But the, <laughs> the Lamnia specifically would turn into their pretty female forms to get victims, which we honestly see more with like kind of mermaids and sirens and that sort of thing, which we will also be going into later. All right. So now we're going to go into the eastern part of the world a little bit. And here we find wall paintings and figurines dating back to 3000 BC that depict blood gods with green faces, pale blue bodies, and massive fangs. India specifically was an epicenter of worship of these blood gods. So a note, I speak of this goddess with absolute respect towards Hindu practitioners. So Kali is the Hindu goddess of death and destruction of evil, and is a fascinating example of vampiric women in mythology. She is depicted with sharp fangs, a garland of human skulls, and four arms that each bear a sword. Her thirst for blood is rumored to be so great that she once slit her own throat to drink the blood spewing from the wound. Arguably the most famous- Metal. Oh, extremely. Honestly, <laughs> like, the source I was reading was kind of, like, demonizing her. But I'm just sitting here reading it like, oh my god, she's cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe again, like, Lamashti, maybe we just go more in depth on her. I kind of think we should. But arguably the most famous, that would be a different episode clarifying yeah arguably the most famous legend surrounding kali is when she and the goddess durga were fighting the demon trying my best here rektabia um who was considered unbeatable due to the fact that every time his blood spilled and it would touch the ground he would rejuvenate and so they went a whole day fighting him they were getting nowhere and then finally kali had the bright idea to spring on this demon and latch herself on and drink all of his blood. And because he didn't have any blood left to drip on the ground, he was unable to rejuvenate. Also, do you mean regenerate? I do mean regenerate. No, it says rejuvenate. Okay. Anyway. Hold on, I'm gonna look. He's good on the other, other side. side of No! Hollywood. Aha, so it is the correct. Brother. The action or process of giving new energy or vigor to something. No, I know of rejuvenation, anyways. So it does work. Okay, we're gonna continue so filming now. <laughs> All right, so perhaps the most well-known figure in Western mythology or the Western world is the next vampiric woman we'll be speaking of, and that is due to her status in the Bible as Adam's first wife. This was not, however, the first historical mention of this demoness. The terrifying Lilith, a winged woman of the night, similar to Lamashtu that we sp spoke of earlier, was a nightmare to all of those in the kingdom of Judah. Her origin in Judaism, however, is tracked back to the Babylonian captivity. When Jerusalem was sacked in 586 BCE and the people of Jerusalem were deported to Babylon, the legends of their captors reached their ears. And then when Babylon was reconquered by Cyrus the Great of Persia in 538 BCE, he allowed the Jews to return to their native land. And many okay. did return. Okay. So you said that she had wings. Is that because... You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people think vampires poof into bats or turn into bats. You know, they poof into a swarm of bats or they mm -hmm. turn into a singular bat. Could that be why? Like, do, it could. is it because, mm -hmm. like, so many of these creatures or these women, I guess, have wings that they just associate vampires with wings and somehow bats got thrown in the mix? It very well could be. However, it is usually agreed by scholars that the reason that vampires and bats are connected is because there are types of bats that will drink human blood. And there are, like, types of bats that will feed on other creatures to live. Honestly, course, I love are, bats. Bats are so cool. Bats are adorable. I do kind of wonder how we got here from, like, instead of having mosquitoes represent vampires. Those things are Because cool. mosquitoes are nasty. Bats are cute. Well, yeah. okay. I'm not, I'm not calling vampires cute. I'm just... I don't... I don't know how we got here. Let's let's We're move on. continue. All right, Babylonian captivity. Let's go. Many Jews, when given the chance, returned to the kingdom of Judah, and they brought the superstition of the Babylonian people with them. And Lilith was one of the things brought back. And in Jewish mythology, she is primarily an infant killer. 
She is also a succubus, meaning that she has sex with men in their sleep in order to get herself pregnant. The idea of a Lilith, a malicious female spirit, has in fact existed since the 7th century BCE in Sumeria. However, it wasn't until she merged with the Tales of Lamashtu from earlier that she became sort of this vampire woman of the night. Even then, it wasn't until the 8th and 10th century, which we consider the Middle Ages, that she was adapted into Christianity. The first role she took was of the wife of Adam, as we mentioned earlier, and she refused to be subservient. And then over time, she shifted into being the queen of demons and either the wife of Asmodeus or the wife of the devil himself. And she is now known as the personification of lust, which clarification, Maddie brought this point up in our last recording that we decided was not worth seeing. I don't think she's considered to be like the patron of lust is like some of the sins have sort of like demon princes and stuff, but she is considered to be- Okay, but like, do they have demon princes or is that just a Carrie Maniscalco thing? Mm, I mean, <laughs> but in the way that Carrie Maniscalco writes them. <laughs> For anyone watching this who hasn't read Kingdom of the Wicked yet, 18 plus, but very good. Hey, 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 hey that was my recommendation. Anyways, so Lilith is the- not embodiment, but she is a representation of lust. Basically. Or she's she's just done so many lustful things that she gets associated with the emotion and action and feeling of lust. I think, honestly, it's kind of what she was associated with when it came to, like, the Catholic Church. At that time, sex equaled bad, especially female sexuality. And so she was a very openly sexual figure. And for the Catholic Church, that was terrifying. All right, so this is the note we're going to end on for this week. And this is in preparation for next week's episode on more modern vampires. And at this point, we're looking at about the 5th century in Eastern Europe. The Magyar people crossed the Carpathian Mountains and settled into the lands that would become modern-day Hungary and Romania. The Romani, a group made up of nomadic clans, were perhaps closest linked to the legends of vampirism due to their close relationship with death lore. We will be discussing the Romani quite a bit in the next upcoming episodes, and we are use choosing to use the term Romani instead of another term which is more popular, but is considered to be derogatory. The Romani creatures of death began spreading to different groups and eventually at this point made their way into Christianity. This is when we begin to see a consistent pattern of revenants, which is a term we're going to be using interchangeably with vampire, and a revenant is a walking undead who would make their way out of the grave stalking the living in search for either blood or life force. So, interestingly, these legends were interconnected with the legends of witches and werewolves. And werewolves might be a surprise to the modern horror fan. And we associate vampires and werewolves with constantly being at war with each other. I mean, you look at the Collins versus um, Jacob's clan. I don't remember if they had a specific name. Um, we're not Twilight fans, so we don't know anything. I we're sorry to any Twilight fans out there. I read the books in high school and I still laugh at the memes that make fun of it, but I don't remember. <laughs> and then we also see that in like, well, I'm assuming we see it in Vampire Diaries because I've heard about it, but I've only ever watched the originals because it's better. But interestingly, the legend of vampire versus werewolf isn't actually really a legend. It pretty clearly stems back to a really bad 1943 horror film called Frankenstein Meets the Werewolf. The more you know. <laughs> I love how it's Frankenstein meets the werewolf, which, by the way, Frankenstein is the is the, is the doctor. So Frankenstein's I'm, the doctor, not the creature. The creature is the creature, capital T, capital C, the creature. I looked at the um, synopsis. I'm going to clarify. Apparently, Dr. Frankenstein in this movie makes a vampire, I think. I did not actually watch the movie because it was not available for free on anything and i was not willing to pay 2.99 on amazon prime for it fair enough but i think it's so interesting because like with vampires and werewolves there honestly there's a lot of similarities there's a lot of similar ways in like how to fend them off mm -hmm. how to kill them but it's it, you know they used to be this not the same thing but a very similar thing and now it's like you mm -hmm. only see vampires hating werewolves and vice versa where you know so why can't we actually, all be friends talking about that like on that point we see vampires and werewolves being connected i think the main way you see it is that a werewolf when it dies will become a vampire the more you know and we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here so 
Maddie, what did you think? I mean, I I don't have a lot of thoughts because it was more informational, but um, I just think it was all very, I think it will definitely help setting up for next week's episode where mm -hmm. we, you know, it's a necessary evil to listen to all of this backstory, which is very interesting, but mm -hmm. we need to listen to it in order to be able to understand what is happening next yeah, week. This was Give me my better than our first pocket. recording, though. <laughs> And you have no idea what's coming next. We're about to Give film me this. my vampire pumpkins. Oh, you're going to be delighted. All right. Yes. So the last note we're going to leave it on today is our wishes that we do every single week. Do you want to go first? I don't have a wish right now. So you go first while I think. <laughs> you like an hour to think of one. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll go first. So I was apparently a little passive aggressive when I was writing my script last night. And I put that your favorite show gets renewed looking at you netflix i have my wish now for any of you people who have to hand wash your dishes you know when you go to wash the spoon and it like goes all over um when you go to wash your spoons i hope the water doesn't splash all over you oh that's good yeah anyways thank you so much to everybody that watched it and for sitting through all of this information we promise you next week will be a lot more entertaining we're gonna be in the same clothes but We'll be coming with some different information. So, um, I, oh, do you have any parting words? Uh, thank you. We'll see you next week, even though we're technically filming these episodes on the same day. <laughs> All right. Bye. Strange time warp. Oh, Bye. Bye. <laughs>